identified in phase one and then of course take up other nodes uh, of those 24 which have been identified by the master planning consultants. Now these are the eight nodes which were taken up. Uh, the consultants were appointed sometimes in 2011 and then I think by 2013 we got their reports, 13, 14. Uh, some of the reports were, uh, had to be uh, sent to the state governments for their com comments and as it happens in India, one of the state governments has still not given us comments on the master plan. So, uh, so these are the delays when we talk about why some things, have, things get delayed in India because we have to deal with, with the states. Action is all in the state government and then the, if the state governments are proactive, we are in a position to, to drive, you know, we can, we can move ahead fast. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the first project which is uh, one of the biggest uh, in of the eight nodes which we have taken up. This is a place in Gujarat. Uh, the size of uh, the project is 920 square kilometer which is one and a half times of the size of Singapore. Uh, we'll have a built up area of about 580 square kilometer, almost the size of Singapore. And the, the, the good thing about the whole thing is that a large chunk of land was available with the government. So uh, a, but for that a couple of uh, stretches are under dispute and under litigation uh, but I think that is not stopping us to go ahead we divided the whole uh, scheme into five, six uh, town planning zones and this is how the whole timelines were decided and that is the timeline which was decided in 2011 so uh, to develop 422 square kilometer we need three decades time we are sitting in 2015 and by 2018 we will have the basic infrastructure in TP1, the, the activation area of 22 and half square kilometer. Uh, that is what we are taking up as the first, uh, first uh, phase of the project, phase A1. And this is bigger than the, the capital uh, development of Amravati which is only 18 square kilometers. So the, the first phase, phase one of our project is bigger than what the new capital city of Andhra Pradesh will look like. Uh, these are the basic base infrastructure which will come up uh, uh, including road and underground services. There is a river flowing close to this site so we are doing a flood management. Portable water of course is an issue. Uh, recycling, ICT master plan is ready. We will we'll immediately start rolling out the moment we start uh, bidding for uh, uh, trunk infrastructure. These are the external components of the project. We will have an expressway for which uh, land acquisition was notified. Uh, I think it got de novo, but we, uh, it will not take as much time to now notify it again. There will be an international airport coming up. Uh, we have an MRTS uh, supported by JICA and good thing is it is already part of uh, the JICA's rolling plan this year. And of course, uh, this will be the typical section of a utility corridor uh, in in phase one. So uh, all the utilities will be below the high below the below the uh, road, uh, highway, so that uh, we don't have to dig up uh, the highway time time and again. Uh, there will be a metro connectivity. Uh, so this is this is a detail of a typical utility corridor, and this is how it is going to come up in in other industrial towns as well. The present status is that we are going to get, I am going to sign the, the shareholders agreement tomorrow. We will get about 1100 hectares of land immediately. And uh, so this is the first point. Tender package has already been issued. Uh, two tender packages, the last date is December 2nd. So we will start, uh, we will we'll finalize uh, the, the, the agency which will be implementing these first two parts. And the remaining three parts will also be rolled out in such a way that the whole uh, trunk infrastructure is ready by the mid of 2018 and simultaneously we'll be start start marketing the the, the, par, the land parcels uh, this is uh, these are the timelines uh, which we have uh, given to ourselves uh, once uh, we uh, identify the agency to implement trunk infrastructure uh, in the third week of uh, December we are likely to launch this and the second project is coming up in Maharashtra, which is Shendra Bedkin, very close to Aurangabad. We already have the city level SPV. We have 8.39 square kilometer of land already with the SPV. The, the equity support of Government of India has already gone to SPV. We have already uh, approved the tender package and in fact, 
tender for uh, uh, part one and two is being open tomorrow. So uh, financial bid will be open on 18th. So we should be able to complete those also by the mid of 2018. Uh, that's the second project which we are going to take up. Third project which is going to come up is in in uh, Dadri, Noida, very close to Delhi, south of Delhi. The concept master plan has already been completed, feasibility studies are being finalized, but we are taking up the first project which is an integrated industrial township in Greater Noida where we already have the land in, po in, in position, we already have started uh, given tender for EPC contractors for the trunk infrastructure. Uh, which uh, the opening date is again 18th of November. So I think that infrastructure we should be able to complete a little early by end of 2017 and uh, uh, we'll start rolling out those projects. The, the, the fourth project which we are going to take up is in Madhya Pradesh where we have already finalized the concept plan and the SHA and SSA have been implemented, executed. Uh, MP is going to declare uh, a special uh, investment region act which is uh, under finalization. We should be able to get it soon. Uh, but one of the first town out of this uh, industrial uh, IR we are going to take up is Vikram Udyogpuri where we have 1100 hectares of land in our position. Land has already been transferred to SPV. The work has started. The good thing is this is our first project where the work has started and by mid of 2018 we will have the trunk infrastructure in place. We will have the water supply line in place which will take care of not only this township which will take care of Peterpur which is their main industrial town. So this is the th uh, fifth project and now we are looking at Rajasthan where we have just put up a solar uh, uh, power pr project of 5 megawatt. It was completed in record time, commissioned in July. It is a model demonstration project of uh, Indo-Japan bilateral uh, friendship and uh, uh, this has started supplying uh, solar power to NVVN from 3rd of September. This is some of the photographs of that. Uh, uh, and then we are putting up a logistics data bank. That's one of the smaller projects, but very important projects because uh, presently we have no mechanism of tracking once a container is loaded from any location and to reach it to the port, uh, we are not sh uh, you know, able to track it. We, you can track the vehicle with GPS, but so we are coming out with an RFID based uh, mechanism which has already been finalized. We, are, we have a JV uh, finalized with uh, uh, NEC of Japan and this project is also, we should be able to roll it out by mid of September next year. Uh, these are, this is mainly about DMIC projects but as I said, any township world over, I am sure you are much more uh, expert, experienced and you have seen the cities developing world over. I think no city, no industrial city, when you develop a complete ecosystem, it's not an industrial park. We have set up industrial park in less than a year. But when you talk about it, developing an, a complete ecosystem, I, somebody was talking about, if it's a Japanese industrial township, you know, there has to be complete, there has to be a school, there has to be a playground, there has to be a, a dining facility. The whole living system has to be, you know, you are creating a whole living city. And nowhere in the world a city has been developed in less than 20 to 25 years. I am sure we should be able to deliver that in that time schedule. We, we, we seek uh, your support and your time. I think other challenges Chennai Bangalore has been discussed in detail because this is one of the Jayaka projects. We have just uh, uh, issued uh, uh, tender for uh, EIA studies. I think that also we should be able to take on schedule. Other, I, I thought Shubhava would have spoken about the other uh, corridors in the morning. If she has not, then I'll just go through it. The, the one was Vijak Chennai Industrial Corridor, which is uh, being supported by ADB. Uh, there again the, the concept plan has all been finalized, the two nodes master planning is underway and there is some commitment by ADB on, on this. Bangalore Mumbai is the next corridor which is coming up, Karnataka has already identified the node and the land. So we are going ahead with the master planning there. Maharashtra is still final, in the process of finalizing, there is a meeting on 20th, I am sure we'll, they should be able to get us some nodes where master planning can begin. Amritsar, Kolkata, uh, the study has been conducted, only thing is three states have to still uh, tell us which will be their integrated manufacturing cluster so that a detailed study of those can be carried out. I think this is, these corridors will also simultaneously move, but DMI-CDC uh, is uh, very hopeful and uh, we, we, we would uh, deliver the, the in first uh, five years by 2000, 
2020 we should be able to get us the first phase of the towns in gujarat in madhya pradesh in maharashtra and in noida thank you thank you and whatever i've heard is music to my ears and to ambassador hk singh's ears because this is one of our big dreams coming true uh one other point which uh, i would like to highlight which came out of the presentation and which is that there is a media hype about land being a very major bottleneck the fact of the matter is that there is more than enough land for the next 10 years of 15% manufacturing growth rate already in possession with state agencies so land is not a constraint in india the constraint is the infrastructure within that land pocket and connectivity to the global supply chain so there is a huge myth that has grown because of our domestic politics that land is somehow a big constraint the fact is next 15 years 15% manufacturing growth rate there is enough land available in india with this i now request mr pillay to talk of the freight corridors and the thank you chair my fellow speakers on the dais and the distinguished audience the railway freight corridor is one of the most uh, important projects infrastructure uh, projects of the country if you talk of infrastructure encompassing uh, power the transport sector and various other thing in the transport infrastructure the railway infrastructure is one of the major uh, infrastructure growth areas because the railways account for about 36% of the transportation in the country of freight just a little background on why these industrial why these freight corridors uh, from around 2012 till 2012-13 there's been virtually a doubling of the freight and passenger transport on the railways the railways indian railways uh, grew gradually and around 2002 we were at a level of 500 million tons of freight and about roughly around 4500 million passengers and over a 10 year period this straight doubled that is up by 2012 or 13 we had crossed 1000 uh, million similarly on the passenger front we were at over 8 nearly 8200 to 8300 million uh, passengers just to give a comparative idea uh, that say the us railroads they carry about 30 million passengers Russia would be uh, about 1500 million passengers China would be about 2000 million plus Japan is the only country which carries more pass rail passengers than India even though it's a much smaller country that's why Japan is called a railway nation it carries more uh, passengers even though the passenger kilometer in India is much higher because we are a larger country so this huge growth uh, in railway passenger passenger and freight volumes created a lot of uh, difficulty for us uh, in the uh, trunk routes which the four trunk routes so delhi mumbai chennai and uh, calcutta and the diagonals account for about 60% of the freight and passenger volumes even though it's around 16% of the network so it was this uh, these corridors which were the maximum uh, stressed on account of the growth in uh, volumes and the continuous growth and demand for uh, transport uh, intercity and uh, long distance we are nearly fourth in the world we are fourth in the world in rail freight volumes and our target is to grow to around 1500 million tons in the next 5 years the other important just the 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 broad major item is that we plan to increase about 20000 track kilometers including two high axle load dedicated freight corridors of over 3000 kilometers in the next 5 years so if one were to put the physical infrastructure in a nutshell this is the physical uh, infrastructure that about 20000 kilometers growth including these two freight corridors in the railways besides the physical infrastructure we also need to find uh, uh, stock which runs on this infrastructure uh, hence the uh, le level of procurement of rolling stock and new manufacturing facilities for locomotives 
and diesels. Uh, uh, diesel and electric locomotives, similarly high axle load and high capacity rolling stock, that is wagons and train sets. I might just add that uh, world over in freight transport, because we are talking of uh, freight corridors, freight transport, be it China, be it Russia, be it US, who are the biggest uh, players and also other players like uh, South Africa, Canada and Australia who again carry a uh, lot of uh, freight in very select isolated freight corridors. These corridors are have been planned abroad in such a way that they are uh, uh, higher capacity than the normal railway network. The idea is that in a single train we will carry more uh, goods. Say for example in China they have uh, on their coal corridors they run trains of 20,000 uh, tons per train against the normal uh, trains which are run most uh, uh, countries of around five to 6,000 tons. So we also when we construct these two uh, freight corridors have plans and we, have con we are constructing the state of the art infrastructure so that we can carry, uh, we can run long trains and heavier trains. That's the uh, background. These are the two freight corridors which are under construction. The blue one is the western dedicated freight corridor which is roughly around 1500 kilometers starting from Jawaharlal Nehru port and coming up to Dadri. <coughs> and the eastern freight corridor which is uh, from Ludhiana in Punjab to somewhere near Calcutta. The eastern and the western freight corridor, they join at Dadri. So if a train has to move from somewhere in Rajasthan or from Mundra port to somewhere on the eastern sector, it can travel on the western DFC and then move over into the eastern DFC at Dadri and uh, carry on. And as I said, we plan to build these corridors to high capacity specifications. The expected cost of these two corridors is uh, 81,500. The cost of the Western DFC is around 50,000 and that on the Eastern is over 30,000. These are huge projects by railway standards or even by standards of infrastructure in the country. And uh, they took time to plan. The, the planning for these started sometime in 2007-8. And by the time we were able to tie up the loans with uh, JICA and the World Bank for the Western and the Eastern Corridor respectively, it was 2010. 2010 and 2011 for the Western DFC. Since then, we are in the process of uh, awarding contracts and uh, a large number of contracts have already been awarded and work is in progress. I'll just come to that. Yes, so I talked about the uh, diagonals and the, uh, I mean the golden quadrilateral and diagonals. So we are covering, if you see the Bom Mumbai to Delhi and the Delhi to Calcutta portions in the east, western and eastern corridors. We are also under, we have also undertaken feasibility studies for the other four corridors, that is north to south, Delhi to Chennai, then east to west, uh, Calcutta to Mumbai. These are the two very uh, intensively used routes apart from the western and the eastern then the east coast corridor which will be again from calcutta to which kharagpur to uh, vijayawada via chennai to chennai and the other last one is from mumbai to chennai basically covering the four routes of the golden quadrilateral that's the whole idea i have indicated the cost of these corridors the north south corridor for example approximately 17.4 billion dollars, 18.42 billion dollars. So that roughly that will be close to around a lakh crores for each of these corridors, from the north-south and the east-west. And depending on what portion we take of the east coast and the southern corridor, will the cost will reduce. Roughly it comes to around 30-35 crores a uh, kilometer. Against the normal uh, Indian railway standard of around 10 to 12 crores a kilometer. And uh, the high speed corridor would be close to around 180 to 200 crores per kilometer. So, this is the range of uh, costs which are there for the various uh, network. And <clears throat> the other thing, as far as the uh, railway corridors are concerned, we say it is permanent way. There is no there are no shortcuts. I mean, if we need to construct 3,000 kilometers of track to carry 
uh, traffic, we need to construct them. There is no other uh, shortcut. We believe that we have exhausted all the shortcuts of ingenuity, etc. Et in the last, uh, from 2000 uh, to 2010, when the traffic got doubled, so a uh, lot of people have lost their hair trying to plan out the movements uh, with the existing network, but. Uh, there is need to expand infrastructure. The Honorable Minister for Railways was there in the morning. He spoke uh, very eloquently about the need to expand infrastructure and uh, the kind of plan that the railways have made for the next five years, roughly around $140 billion of investment is required in the next five years in the railways in case we are to keep pace. These are the two corridors under in implementation, the western and the eastern, the overall 3,300 kilometers. The eastern DFC is from Dankuni is near Calcutta uh, to Ludhiana, 1856 kilometers, almost entirely double line except a small portion in uh, uh, from Ludhiana to Khurja, which is uh, single line. This has been decided on the basis of traffic. Similarly, the western corridor from uh, Mumbai to Delhi <coughs> is again 1,500 uh, kilometers of double line. The capacity, we would be able to run around 150 to 180 freight trains each way, each day. That means roughly if you say 150, it's 300 trains can run on the freight corridor against a maximum of around 50 to 60 freight trains each way today on the trunk routes. This is because on the existing uh, trunk routes of the railways, almost 65% of the capacity is used for passenger trains and 35% is only available for uh, freight even though freight <coughs> gives us almost 60 to 70 percent of our revenues. The Eastern DFC would carry largely coal and iron and steel besides other commodities but these would be the predominant commodities and the coal would be largely to the powerhouses uh, in the northern part of the country. The Western DFC containers, fertilizer and coal largely from the ports on the western uh, part of the country to the northern hinterland. And now that we have, we are planning a connection from between Western and Eastern DFC, it can go from the Western part of the country to the Eastern part as well. This is the potential traffic as per one assessment. The Eastern DFC, if you would see, is around 153 million tons and Western DFC is around 160 million tons in by 2021-22. Just to give an idea, uh, Indian Railways is today around 1100 million tons. So it would be roughly around 25 to 30 percent of the traffic which is today being carried by Indian Railways, we will be able to carry extra. To some extent initially, the traffic from the Indian Railways would get diverted here, uh, but this would also give ample opportunity and uh, every kind of incentive to attract more traffic into the DFCs. And this traffic we expect will grow because uh, with the number of new ports which are going to come up in the country, my the earlier speaker talked about the Delhi-Mumbai industrial uh, corridor, a lot of uh, potential is there for new traffic from new ports as also from the industrial clusters that are coming up on the western DFC. And also on along the eastern DF, now along the western DFC, we are going to have the Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. Similarly, on the east along the eastern DFC, we would have yeah, I'll just on the along the eastern DFC, we are going to have the Amritsar Calcutta Industrial Corridor. So these corridors are very welcome for the railways because uh, we believe it will bring in traffic for the railways, be it the DMIC or the uh, AK. DIC. Just I will skip this but I just want to make one point here that the DFCs are being constructed to state of the art world class specifications. In every aspect of the uh, corridor we will be able to, we are bringing in efficiency, it will be able to carry taller trains, that means double stack container trains, it will have wider moving dimensions. It can carry uh, two trains, uh, no, the no, two normal trains would become a, uh, a single train on the DFC. So it can carry, in the, you can imagine the kind of capacity that would be created. We would be able to carry on a normal train around uh, 12, 13,000 tons. Similarly, everything, I'll just uh, skip this because uh, uh, in all uh, 
aspects of the freight movement we will be able to bring in efficiency we are since we are going to have longer trains bigger trains and heavier trains what is the current position of the uh, freight corridor i'll uh, quickly cover the DF eastern dfc then i'll come to the western dfc since uh, the western dfc is the jaika funded dfc we are having for the eastern dfc funding by world bank for over 70% of the project cost in 1183 kilometers out of around 1800 kilometers world bank are funding it in uh, three phases that is kanpur to uh, khurja then kanpur mughal sarai and ludhiana khurja dadri this is the phasing we have already signed the loan agreements for phase uh, apl1 we call it the phase 1 phase 2 and uh, the loan agreement the loan is already sanctioned for phase 3 <coughs> the contracts also just since we are on this uh, the apl1 kanpur khurja 343 kilometers the contracts are already awarded all contracts are awarded and work is in progress almost uh, 30 40% work is already done and it sh this should be through by 2018 kanpur mughal sarai the major contracts again have been uh, awarded Uh, Ludhiana Khurja Dadri we are in the process of awarding the contracts by early next year these contracts would be awarded these are all typically design build lump sum contracts unlike the normal contracts in the railways they are huge contracts of uh, ranging from 4 to 5000 crores per contract they cover uh, the entire range of act, uh, works which are required say for example if you take the example of a civil construction normally in the railways we have a multiplicity of contracts we we have them what we call boq or item rate these are design build lump sum contracts which cover the entire uh, range that is starting from the earthwork the blanketing the track works the bridges the major bridges minor bridges everything gets covered in one single contract so there is pressure on the contractor there is pressure on the supervision uh, Uh, also from the side of dfccl there are penalties on both sides there is pressure of uh, land acquisition incidentally for both these corridors the total amount of land required is a stupendous 11500 hectares and uh, for the major portion that is 2800 kilometers we have already acquired over nearly 90% of the land enough to award the contracts and enough to proceed uh, satisfactorily now we come to the western dfc the western dfc is the flagship project of indo japan uh, cooperation in the infrastructure sector maybe after uh, the delhi metro cooperation but in terms of uh, size bigger than much bigger than the delhi metro in terms of in money terms JICA is funding 100% of the eligible cost for this uh, corridor the eligible the ineligible costs are uh, land acquisition administrative expenses taxes and uh, interest during construction which so therefore their funding comes to roughly around 80% 78 to 80% of the uh, total project cost is funded by JICA it is also the first funding under the ODA scheme under the step scheme of the this is called the special terms of economic partnership uh, this funding for the western dfc is the first of its kind on uh, indian railways it is a kind of uh, tied funding which uh, stipulates that the prime contractors would be japanese or japanese led joint ventures and we would also source goods from japan to the extent of 30% of the uh, entire value of the contracts the total value of the contracts out of that 30% will be sourced from japan effectively it comes to around 12000 uh, crores of goods to be sourced uh, from japan there is a certain definition of what is meant by goods sourced from japan i'm not going into that but this is the uh, uh, the first uh funding of this kind it has its own uh, challenges and uh, it <coughs> because the prime contractors have to be japanese or japanese led joint ventures so there are there are issues of uh, number of uh, bids uh, in a package but we have got over most of these issues and uh, are in a stage where the work is proceeding fast uh, transport sector it would be <coughs> definitely one of the biggest 
The 65% of the civil contracts have already been awarded and work is in progress. Similarly, the electrical and systems con signaling contracts, also 65% of the contracts have been awarded. These contracts, the civil contract, as I mentioned, is uh, supposed to be four-year design build lump sum, and the electrical and uh, uh, signaling contracts have to be completed in the shadow of these contracts. So they are not; they are within the uh, four-year period. We expect that the balance contracts would be awarded by 2019. The project commissioning would be by it would be in phases and should get completed by 2019. JICA is funding. 38,000, uh, that is around 550 billion as far as the project construction is concerned. They are also funding uh, the procurement of rolling stock, which I have not included in this because it is not a construction cost. But roughly around 45,000 crores is the funding which is coming from Japan for this project, if I include the rolling stock also. It is being done in two phases, 900 kilometers and 560 kilometers. Funding for both phases is tied up, and loan agreements for the first tranche for both phases were already signed some time back in 2010 to start with, the phase one, and subsequently phase two. As and when we require further money, we will sign the contracts for the further uh, tranches. We expect that by in next year, we would draw the money for the second, we would sign the agreements for the second tranches. So as far as the funding part is concerned, since almost 80, close to 80% of the funding is coming from JICA, and uh, we have uh, completed the land acquisition portion. Right now, for both the corridors put together, we have already spent over 15,000 crores. We have entered into financial commitments of around 43,000 crores, excluding escalation. So if you count escalation,